Hey guys, thanks for coming. Uh, champions on defense played uh, exceptional at one point during the course of the game. I want to say it was 30 to 25 or 30 yards rushing going in the fourth quarter and 60 or 70 yards passing. And obviously, we gave up a few plays, two man coverage busts, uh, but against a, a, an offense that uh, we had a lot of respect for in that quarterback. So, overall, defense played very well. Champions were Joel Hale, which is good to see, and Mike Hill on the inside. Taekwon Lewis, Adolphus Washington, Sam Hubbard, Darren Lee, Raekwon, Josh Perry, and Eli are the champions. And then uh, co-player of the game, Joey Bosa and Vaughn Bell. Vaughn obviously got a second score of the year and uh, uh, playing at a very, very high level. Joey Bosa is uh, as disruptive as any defensive player that uh, I've been around. So he's playing very well also. On offense, um, Started very slow, but uh, had some guys play well. Had two receivers, great champions. Jalen Marshall and Mike Thomas are playing very high level for us in blocking and uh, making plays. Offense line, you had Billy Price and Taylor Decker. Tight end, you had Vic, Nick Vinette. And then players of the game, you had our tailback, Zeke. And uh, uh, Pat Elfline is as is, is consistent as any offense line we have. Special teams, you had... Uh, uh, special Jalen had a 33-yard punt return. Eli had two knockdowns on one return, playing uh, real hard. And special teams player of the week is great to see this. Uh, I think he's following in the, in the mold of a uh, Von Bell. I'm hoping he does. Von Bell, Tyvis Powell, and Garyon Conley because he plays a lot of the same positions that they did on kicking. And that's Denzel Ward. So I'll answer any questions. Uh, I'm sure we get the first one will be quarterback. So uh, uh, if JT has a good week of practice, he'll get the start against uh, Illinois. Uh, Braxton Miller has a sore neck and uh, uh, did not practice yesterday. We anticipate him practicing tomorrow if all goes well. Front row middle, Dave. Because you won't make the final determination until Friday or will it be Thursday after practice or um, as far as JT being the starter or not? I'll be the starter unless something, you know, whether have, does not have a good week of practice or something. So. That's really every week, you know. Front row right, uh, Bill. How did JT handle last week, and how do you think it affected him? Uh, I think, well, it's a mistake made, a serious mistake by a kid that really has lived most of his life mistake-free. I mean, he's a kid that uh, he's human, and uh, and then I still have these conversations with him. I said, you can handle when people say you're not very tall or you're not fast enough, you don't throw long far enough. But when someone's challenge is who you are as a person or a man, that's tough. And he probably has not that, had that happen to him very often. And apparently you spoke at halftime. Can you share what? I wasn't there. I didn't. Uh, I saw that someone said that to me, too. I didn't see that. Urban, last week uh, there was speculation that Braxton would be have a larger role at quarterback, maybe throw the ball. Was that smokescreen, uh, as it turns out, a little bit, uh, or did something happen? I mean, uh, no, nothing happened. It's just the way the game went along. <laughs> Front row, right? Do you want to expound on it or no? Not really. <laughs> Urban, at, at this point, whether, I mean, if Cardale has to go in or if JT is the starter, it just feels like you guys need the quarterback run game to be a part of it. What is, but what is different when you turn Cardale loose as a rusher compared to what you want to do with JT? A much different rusher. Uh, Cardale really did a nice job on cues draws, much slower developing plays. And then JT, if you look back his history, the more of the quick hitting, a little more Braxton style. It's just much different style of offense. Uh, but we have the ability to do both. I guess at this point, too, with the number of games and number of practices, was it an easy call for you to go with JT back this week? Or did you have to give it much thought compared to sure. September? Sure. No, it's uh, never an easy call because one guy had uh, his 11th win, 250 all-purpose yards, started off a little slow and accurate on a few passes, finished fairly good, uh, made some good plays for us, and uh, is invested in our program. It's never easy. Uh, so. Uh, I think it's the right thing at this time. Far left, uh, Matt. Um, got um, several like win streaks going, and one of them is consecutive wins in conference. And Jerry's notes, if you 
we're able to get this win this week. It'll be the longest streak any team in any conference has ever had, three in a row. I'm just wondering how much when you have streaks like that, to even bring stuff like that up, or is it, um, you know? No, I don't, not with the team. Uh, on rare occasion, you know, certainly not this this one. I have not in the past. I, I maybe have, but you know, there's so much to be done. And and what does that make a kid play harder, or does it? You know, I think it just kind of complicates things a little bit more, as opposed to go find a way to beat Illinois the best, play the best you can. So, I, I really we don't have conversations about that. Um, one thing just about Braxton, um, when that play happens, how much do you? I mean, you've talked about your fondness so how much do you like hold your breath and? Uh, that well, it was very right. reminiscent of the uh, Purdue game a few years ago. I mean, that's darn, you know, hitting the ground like that. So, uh, yeah, it's just he's like a you know, we spent four years together, and that's the worst thing about this profession is dealing with guys get dinged up like that, especially guys you've been so close with. So, same reaction. Uh, front row right here, Tim. Yeah, Urban, number one, can you, uh, can Braxton Miller pass? Can he throw a football? Yes. Yeah. He, I mean, he, is he doing that in practice? Uh, not a lot. Not a lot. No, not but a he lot. Is. He's still, you know, he's still, um, he can. It's not, it's not, you know, I think what happened to him a year ago was still fresh in his mind. And, and um, so it's not, it's not, he's not out there throwing seven on seven, spinning all over the field, but he certainly can throw it. Yeah. Uh, JT, you talked about this a minute ago, but as you watch like the Rutgers video, what do you see when JT is on the field when the when the offense is clicking? What what is can you explain to people, you know, what he's getting done? Yeah, he gives you an added element of the double option in the in the offense. And double option means I'm either I'm reading someone, you know, either in a throw or in a run game. Obviously the you know, ten years ago or fifteen years ago it's not as easy anymore. It used to be very easy because defenses didn't understand it, now they do. But you read the, you know, you read a defensive end. He closes. You pull it. You run. Get yards and move, move on. Uh, it's much more complicated than that now. You're reading, you know, a variety of different reads, and defenses are so good at giving you false reads. So, but any time you have that, that gives you a cleaner defense, you know, because teams are not quite as um, um, aggressive. Yeah. And, and when it comes to the side, do you, do you get a good picture from him? Uh, of what he's seeing, I mean, is he seeing what you guys are seeing? You understand what I'm Talking saying? About JT? I mean, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, he tells you what he's. That's a strength of his. Yeah. You know, he's uh, he's a coach on the field. And one last thing for me, uh, Jalen Marshall. He's been really close, it seems, in a few games to really having a breakout. Is he, in your mind, is he one of those guys? Oh, he's one of our best players right now. He's one of our best practice players. He's a guy that's handled his business in the classroom. You know, and. Uh, He'd be the first one to tell you he redshirted not because we were saving him. He wasn't good enough. He didn't work hard enough. He screwed around in the classroom, and and uh, as a result of fine parents and a lot of pushing from other people, he's he's handling it. I mean, he's I, I can't wait to see him every day. That's how much he's matured, and it shows on the field. He's a leader for us. He's uh, you know doing a lot of the unselfish things that maybe most people don't see. That blocking, he's our best blocker. You know, and he's obviously a, a, a very aggressive punt returner that's worked very hard on that. He's one of the best punt returners in America right now. Front row left, Doug. Urban, by this point in the season, I'm sure as an offense you want to have established what you do well. But whether it's with the Braxton role or anything else, how much do you also want to keep defenses guessing that when they're game planning for you, Maybe they don't know exactly what you have. Well, we've had a few games. I think the two before, uh, you know, the, the Penn State and the uh, Rutgers, I felt, really felt that way. I felt do what we're doing well, but have enough wrinkles, like the two tight end sets. And you took a team that doesn't give up much, rush, much rushing yardage and ran for 350, close to 350 yards on Penn State, who we have a lot of respect for. And that was simply because they, we kept them off balance and the quarterback and tailback were making the right reads. And uh, so it's it's... That's the goal, what you just said is the goal, is be very good at what you do and then have enough wrinkles each week, to, whether it be a Braxton, whether it be um, you know, some other things that we have not done. That, that's what we spend all this time doing. What are we good at? Let's make sure we do it. But defenses nowadays, I mean, it's with all this video and in the last four, five, six years, it's, I mean, it's, defenses do a much better job than they have in the past. 
talked a lot this season about the injuries at receiver and you know that list of guys. How much has that affected what you've been able to do on the field? And how important has it been you praised Mike and Jalen that those two guys are playing the way they are? Well, Jeff Green has stepped up too. Jeff Green's a guy that's been playing for us. Um, and, and filling in admirably and doing a good job. Also, Marcus Ball is getting many more reps than he has in the past, and guys are having to play a little bit more plays than they have. Paris Campbell is questionable now, so he's getting close to getting back. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, Corey Smith and, and Noah Brown are not, and Dontre Wilson will know more. You know, he's uh, moving around now, and we, we'd like to get him back. But you're starting to get real thin on numbers, but so is week 10 or whatever it is. That's look across the country. That's what happens. Last questions, uh, back row there, Rob. Uh, Urban, me again. Um, you labeled this the grind. And there does seem like there's a sense of heaviness uh, this season. Like maybe, I don't know, lack of enjoyment is a fair way to put it. Did you name it that knowing this was going to be the case? I mean, is there a fear of a self-fulfilling prophecy? or? Do you, do you no, it's, I, I do believe that there is a little bit of tightness, of heaviness, of expectation, living up to other people's expectation, living up to our own expectation. Uh, most of the people in that locker room were together in Dallas, Texas, and saw stuff falling from the ceiling. And, and then, uh, you know, I feel it. I feel our staff. But I, the good thing is I have experience with it, and so it is a grind. And the whole point was that you made, we all made decisions. You don't have to stay here. You don't have to coach here. Go wherever you want, but you have to embrace the grind because there's only one way we're going to do it. And it's really hard and work really hard, and that was the whole purpose of it.